and welcome back everyone. So today we want to talk to you a little bit about Rebecca Stowe. Rebecca Stowe disappeared in 1993 and she was 15 years old at the time of her disappearance. Nobody knew where she went. The police initially didn't know where she went. They had a couple suspects, two to be exact, and one of them was her boyfriend at the time, Robert Lehman. And they wanted nothing more but than to give closure to this family. And it needs to be known that when Rebecca originally went missing, she was, she was having a lot of problems at home with her family. She was rebelling a lot, an awful lot against her family. And initially, when she turned up missing, a lot of people assumed that Rebecca had just run away because they didn't be want to believe that anything else was possible. And they wanted to believe that Rebecca was safe and that she had taken off with or was staying with other friends. But it turned out not to be the case. Eventually, Robert Lehman would be arrested a couple of years later for her murder. Robert Lehman, at the time, was 16 years old when he killed Rebecca. And he had hidden her body underneath a wood pile. When her body was found, the only thing that remained was the skeletal remains of herself and the partial decomposed skeletal remains of their baby. Yes, Robert killed Rebecca because she was 15 years old and was pregnant and refused to get an abortion. And the reason why I'm, besides this, you know, the fact that this is a tragic, tragic case, the reason why I'm covering this today is because the United States Supreme Court ruled that it's unlawful, it's not, you know, and morally it's not right to sentence a juvenile to an indefinite period of time without the possibility of parole. And he was given the sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. He has been incarcerated since 1993. And just recently, the state Supreme Court and the local uh, Superior Court judge there had to look at the case again because the Supreme Court ruled you cannot hold someone who is a minor who committed even a horrific crime like this. You cannot keep them incarcerated until he dies in his 70s. That would be more than what an adult would get for the same crime. And it'd be more than what is just. Because he's 16, he, you know, he is still a juvenile and not to the same standards as an adult. Like it or not, that is the law. The law that we have set down and we have you know, gone through and the Supreme Court confirmed. You cannot send a child to the electric chair. And I know they've done it in Texas and they've done it in Oklahoma and a couple other states. They have definitely you know, incarcerated and then executed minors. But since those, those you know, uh, atrocities happened, we have set laws in place that you cannot keep this person in prison for an indefinite period of time. He has to have at least a chance at parole. So the Superior Court judge ruled that the United States Constitution and the Supreme Court was ruled, they ruled in, you know, uh, in it, this case, and they ruled in all cases, what it has to do with an indefinite prison uh, meant for a juvenile who committed an atrocity like this. Now, the prosecution, the DA, has come to the family and said, you need to understand, when this goes back to court here shortly, there is a chance that Robert will be given the option of parole. He has been a model citizen since he has been in prison, incarcerated. He has finished his high school diploma. He, and he has gone on to take other classes, 
and behavioral classes to realize just how sorry you know he should be and to know the rights and wrongs of what he's done he's done and yet the family wants nothing more than to see him die in prison understandably i mean they did take rebecca rebecca was a you know young lady who had her entire life in front of her and yes at the same time Robert had the same thing, but Robert made a series of bad judgments and bad decisions in his life, and he went to this extreme. And there is no reason why we should turn the other cheek and look away and not hold Robert accountable for what he did. No one is ever saying that, that Robert shouldn't have been punished for what he did. It's how much of a punishment can we justify as a society to punish Robert? Should Robert be kept in prison until he dies himself? Or is 40 years, 60 years, 70 years, is there a point when we say, you know what, the likelihood is that he's not going to reoffend again. He never had any problems with the law before this. And, you know, since he's been in prison, he's been a model, model citizen, a prisoner, and he's not gotten in trouble since he's been incarcerated. Should Robert be allowed to have parole? The family doesn't think so. A lot of people out there are going to, you know, jump into the comments section here and say, Robert should be held in prison because of what he did. Rebecca is not going to get another day on this, on this earth nor was her unborn child, so Robert deserves to die in prison. Without looking at the complete circumstances of it and the age and the mentality of Robert, you can't make that judgment without knowing all the specifics of the case itself. And that's the way it is. As society, we have set rules and laws you know, and down and said, look, we must be fair to everyone. If Robert was mentally disabled, should we prosecute and keep Robert in prison against his will because he didn't know right, right or wrong? If he was mentally disabled, would, would that be okay then? Would it be okay for us to put Robert into the electric chair you know, and execute him if he was mentally disabled? If Robert had something else that happened to him, you know, horrific amount of abuse. There was some kind of circumstances behind it all. And Robert acted out this way towards Rebecca and killed her because of what had happened to him. Do we not take that into account? Do we not take into account on the other end, the far end, and say, look, Robert didn't have any of these other issues, but on this far end over here, Robert made a poor decision. Do we keep him in, in prison longer than say, another person and an adult who knows better, who committed the same atrocity, and that person gets 25 years and then they're out with the possibility of parole. Robert, 16 years old, on this far end over here, why does he not get 25 years and then a possibility of parole? And that's where we are, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Lehman, age 16, convicted murderer. He killed his girlfriend, Rebecca, and their unborn child. Does Robert deserve parole? Or should we keep him in prison until his natural life is gone? Thank you for joining me today. You stay safe out there.